ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Life Update 2. I am the Digital Kingdom Editor, and in this one I bring a lot of good news, um, a very much needed good news, and um, you know, I, I kind of just want to be transparent with everything that's happened since the first Life Update, and you know, just kind of uh, talk a lot about things, uh, maybe rant on about certain things as well, but um, I do kind of want to keep it in a relatively similar structured video. Uh, as the life update one was I actually do have a Google Docs sheet open um, just to kind of um, help bullet point some of the ideas that I've I'm trying to get across because I looking back and kind of talking about a lot of the stuff in the life update one um, it wasn't super structured it was kind of all over the place so hopefully with this it should help me kind of formulate my thoughts a little better so um, but yeah hopefully this won't be too long of a video uh, we'll just see uh, I'm just gonna be me talking so uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, if you want to hear about stuff that's been happening within the past month and a half and just me ranting and, um, you know, talking about stuff that's going to be expected in the future, uh, you come to the right place. So without further ado, this is the life update too. All right. So uh, the first thing I want to mention is that I was finally able to secure a job. Um, the job title is tier one help desk engineer um, that can be replaced with help desk support, um, help desk technician. Um, the person that I'm working with on this is like, they're giving it so many names. It's like, what the fuck do I choose at this point? Right? So I'm just going to go with tier one help desk engineer. And that is basically a glorified way of saying that I'm your average IT tech support person. Right? So if you don't know what this job does, it's basically just, you know, let's just say you have your average Joe Schmo, right? Sitting at their computer and somebody happens to call in having a problem with something on their computer. It is Joe Schmo's job to be able to sort of work with this person to figure out what the cause is, see if there's anything they can do to fix it. Um, if they can't, if it's something that they're maybe not equipped to handle, um, you would basically pass it to the team that's above you that is more equipped and more knowledgeable to be able to handle those issues. So that is basically my job as a tier one help desk engineer. Another thing I also do want to make mention of and I feel is very important is that this is a temp position and if you don't know what that means um, it just means that I'm going to be working in this role for a specific amount of time um, the time frame for this as of right now is going to be anywhere between two to three months is kind of what the uh, the company that I'm working for is expecting uh, to do so it's very possible that I may be working up until the end of this year uh, maybe until part of January um, so so again, you know, it is a temp job. It sucks that it's not like, you know, a full-time offer with them. But that's also another thing I want to mention as well. So this role is a temp to hire. So basically you start on as a temporary person working for them. And, you know, at the end of the temp period, there very much is a possibility that they can extend an offer to you to become an employee full-time with them. And that's kind of what I'm looking forward to because... As I'm going to explain later, um, it seemed like they really wanted me. Like, I was very surprised with how the whole process went, you know? So, um, you know, as I explained it to my wife and, you know, even she was like, yeah, you know, like, it sounds like they really want you. Like, I feel like there's pretty much no way they don't take you on unless you just don't do your job. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I think it's very cool to be able to, you know, have a chance at this in terms of you know just starting out as a temporary worker because experience is experience you know and i think that's very important to have especially in the it and cybersecurity world which i reside in or really any job honestly you know um experience trumps over anything so just the fact that i'm able to get in the industry somehow even as a temp worker for two to three months that's still something very very valuable you know um so yeah so like i said you know it's a temp position. However, there is a chance that I could be brought on as a full-time employee, which I think would be the ideal outcome of this. So again, even if I'm not brought on full-time, I think it's a very valuable experience that I can turn around and have a better shot at, you know, trying to get some of these very similar kinds of roles, you know, because I've actually done it now. So, so with temp roles, um, they are extremely common in IT and cybersecurity, just because, you know, there's a lot of work out there that um, is more short term, especially with this, um, because the this company classifies what they're doing as a quote unquote IT special project. So 
um, it, 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 again, it seems short term. Uh, there's like there's going to be, I guess, a specific building that I'm going to be working in that where um, I guess they're they're doing something in there. May I think it almost sounds like they're trying to set up offices in there and try to set up uh, company headquarters. And it's like a it's like an office building that you can lease out certain areas to. Yeah, so it almost seems like they're trying to, I guess, set up some kind of office there. And I think they just need people to kind of temporarily work and fill in the gaps of people who are maybe trying to make that change. So, um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. It's interesting, uh, but you know, regardless, I'm just happy I was be able to be brought on for this, which is very cool. So, uh, but yeah, again, you know, temporals, um, very common, especially for the lower level roles like these are, like these are here. Um, it's also the ones that usually have the best chance of success because it's recruiters that handle the hiring process, not the company itself necessarily. And you really only interview with a company at the very end for them um, in order to make a final decision in terms of who they're going to hire. So, um, and, you know, if you get hired, the recruiters make a bit of money as well because it's, you know, it's in their best interest to push you to try to market you as a good candidate for this position uh, because they get a cut of the uh, they get a cut of the money as well as, you know, you find a job and the employer gets somebody who they think is a good fit. So. I think overall it's a it's a win 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 situation, and you know, and I think a lot of people may or may not really know about that option. Um, I was lucky to kind of discover that, and you know, try my hand with a lot of them because usually those kinds of roles get the most calls back. You know, so um, again, as somebody fresh out of college who needs experience, I think this is the best way to go, and I think this was the right way to do it. So yeah, so as I said. Um, this job is really just an IT tech support role. Uh, it's got a fancy name with it, but pretty much um, what I do is going to be some of the following, right? So uh, we serve as the first point of contact for all tech support queries via phone, email, and chat. So again, you know, we're the first line of uh, people who respond to any calls, chats, emails that uh, for that are coming from people that are having uh, computer problems, right? Um, so. And then we troubleshoot and resolve hardware and software issues. Uh, we're going to be working with Windows, Mac OS, uh, Microsoft Office Suite applications. So, you know, that's like Outlook, Word, uh, Excel, SharePoint, probably, and just just more. Um, but that that's what the job description had basically said when I was applying. So um, next, we log, categorize, and track support tickets using the company's ticketing, ticketing system. I feel like that's very standard among pretty much all the companies because you have to have a way to document incidents and you know track what you've done so that way if it needs to go to the next team they can take a look at what they're dealing with what you've already done and pretty much pick up where you left off so uh, that's pretty good so assist with basic network troubleshooting and connectivity issues uh, i think that's another very basic one um you know you just got to make sure that the the network is up and running um do some very basic troubleshooting with that like I highly doubt we're going to dive into Cisco switches and shit and, and routers and whatnot, but uh, I mean, you never know. So we just got to need, I guess, kind of need to see what they uh, what they want me to do with that. So and then, of course, you know, there are other duties that are aligned with this role, but I'd say this is the the main points of this job. And um, I also kind of want to touch on the the process to get this job because it was extremely untraditional compared to everything else that I've I've gone through so far when trying to find a job. So. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll start from the beginning. So, um, I applied to this job, right? Just kind of willy nilly. I didn't really think about it. I was just kind of shooting my application anywhere and everywhere that I possibly could in order to try to get something right. Um, and I get a call back from that, the recruiter for that company and for the, um, for the agency as well. Um, I, I get a call back from him within about two hours and, you know, they were, they were telling me, you know, like they were looking and, you know, it, it does seem like that the company is looking for somebody who has actual experience because they want, um, they need to be able to start performing the job functions. And it's like, okay, you know, I mean, that's fair, um, especially on a, on a short term project, you know, um, I think that's, that's fair and understandable. And, you know, and again, to remind everyone, um, I am fresh out of college with no professional job experience in IT or cybersecurity. So, you know, I mean, again, that was understandable. So, you know, I'm like, okay. Uh, it is what it is, so let's just see what ends up happening, and, you know, he'll, um, so he went ahead and pushed me, 
um, send my resume to the company and the hiring manager for them and just kind of, you know, just to see what happens, right? Because the worst they're going to say is, eh, probably not, probably not this guy, you know, and just move on with with my life and their life, you know, like no harm, no foul, right? Uh, what was surprising though is that the very next day, just kind of out of nowhere, I get a voicemail because I, I missed a call from him. I didn't, I didn't know it was him at the time. Um, so uh, he left a voicemail saying something along the lines of, you know, hey, so they took a look at your resume and they actually changed the scope of the position because of your resume. It appears that they're looking for someone with a cybersecurity background and you're that guy. Uh, if you accept this, you're basically immediately hired as a temp for this role. So, you know, call me back when you're free and we can get discussing on more details about it. So, you know, for me, that was really good news is basically just extending an offer when I didn't even have to do anything. But at the same time, you know, I was a little skeptical because honestly, that does sound like something that is too good to be true, you know, um, again, especially being offered this job without even needing to go through an interview process of anything, you know, because all the recruiters that I've worked with before, you know, they'll talk to you, kind of figure out um, whether or not you'd be a good fit for this role based on what the company is looking for, right? Um, and of course, you know, the recruiters are probably not going to know every every single thing about the job. Um, they're only know, they only know what they're told. So if I start, you know, talking to them about a bunch of cybersecurity concepts, like they're probably not going to understand it. You know, they're just looking for people, you know, whose resumes and experience, I guess, lines up with whatever it is that they're looking for. So, you know, I was like, okay, that's kind of odd. So again, it, you know, it sounded too good to be true. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure it was, you know, legit. So, you know, I, I checked out the agency that was handling all of it. Uh, but I mean, from what I could gather, you know, they were legit. So, you know, it was, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, it's too good to be true, but like, it is true, you know? So, um, I was very surprised on that. Um, yeah, and like I said previously, um, it does seem to be a short-term project where they do need people ASAP. So, you know, in my head, I was thinking maybe, you know, as long as the candidate themselves seems good enough, I assume they're just going to give someone a shot because again, it's temp work. They need people, they need bodies, you know? Um, and I would say probably the saving grace is that, you know, I have a lot of face-to-face -face customer service, you know, I've worked customer service jobs pretty much all my life. And, you know, um, I do have a technology background as well, you know, with cybersecurity and just kind of working towards other certifications in my free time, right? So um, I feel like there's a very good mix of the two, but I, I do feel strongly that this is going to be a job that really revolves more around customer service. And because we are, you know, level one, I think it's to be expected that there, there will be problems that we may not be able to solve. So I, I think, you know, in that point, I think it's just good customer service, you know, trying to communicate what's happened and try to get more information um, try to solve it on the first call, um, you know, just to see if we can kind of streamline that process. But I think ultimately, you know, it's a job that revolves more around customer service more so than actual tech skills, um, at least in my opinion. You know, I mean, obviously you have to have technical knowledge and everything, but you've got Google, you have, you know, hopefully an internal database of previous incidents. So that way, you know, if there's any incidents that are like, hey, you know, I think I remember this, this seemed to be something that happens a lot you know you can just go back there take a look at what people have done and try to replicate that so um you know i mean again i think it's more so the fact that i just i just need to get my hands on experience and really try to work with all of this stuff you know um but i i think a lot of it is really going to be carried by by customer service by me in this job at least starting out right you know, because, you know, I have a feeling they probably just need people ASAP and somebody who seems good enough to fit the bill. Um, I assume they're just going to give them a shot, right? So um, I also did realize that they actually wanted two people for this role um, based on the job description that I was reading. And I actually didn't catch that the first time. So um, I think that also is probably a huge factor in why I was also selected for this role. Um, you know, because I'm pretty sure they hadn't, they probably already had somebody and, you know, my resume came along and it's like, oh, you know, this guy also seems good, um, you know, especially when the job description very clearly outlined that it was a short term IT special project. So I'm like, OK, you know, probably you're probably not going to get too many people looking for that, you know, because they're looking for more permanent work. But, um, with, you know, again, fresh college graduate with no experience, you, you can't really afford to be picky. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like I just kind of have to take what I can get. Right. So, um. Um, I called them up the next day and, you know, I, I get more information regarding the job overall. 
uh, to me, it sounded good and promising. And, you know, the most surprising part, again, was that, you know, there was confirmation that I don't even need to go through an interview process at all uh, since they, they wanted me for this job, you know. Um, again, you know, it sounded like they took a look at my resume and they were like, oh, shit, you know, um, you're him, bro, you know, like type shit. So, um, so I don't know. That, that was very surprising. Uh, and, you know, I, I just I wasn't expecting that. Um, but also another reason was that, you know, this recruiter has been working with this same company for about four years. And I think every time he's been able to deliver very promising candidates. So, you know, I, I think with that, you know, with him vouching for me and pushing for me, um, I think that's the reason why I was able to also secure this job as well, because, you know, um, just my background and kind of his his faith and trust in me, you know, with that. So um, I think that was very cool. And uh, that's something I'm, I'm going to be forever grateful for, you know. But yeah, so, you know, again, um, I, you know, I just didn't have to go through an interview process, which was very nice. And um, so the pay for this job is anywhere between $19 an hour and 30 an hour, depending on, you know, skill set and everything. Um, the recruiter said he'll try to get me 20 an hour, which I mean, honestly, I think is fair. Um, I think that's very good for someone with no real experience in this field and is just a fresh college graduate student, you know. Um, and again, you know, the most I've ever made was 16 an hour and that was cleaning hotels, man, you know, so like I'll, I'll take 19, 20, you know, just to sit down at a job and take calls and try to try to figure out tech problems and shit like that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, again, um, this job is expected to last a couple months, so it may go to the end of the year maybe until late January, we'll have to see. But, you know, again, hopefully um, I'll be able to get some kind of full-time job offer with him if I do good enough and just, you know, try to run with that. Um, And, you know, at the time of recording this, today is Monday. Um, I'm still waiting on paperwork to be emailed to me in order to, to fill that out. You know, the I-9, W-4 forms, as well as a background check request because um, they, they want to try to start me as soon as possible. So um, they're predicting, hopefully, you know, if I get everything done and everything is pushed quickly, um, that hopefully I can start by Wednesday, which will be uh, two days from now from recording this. So, uh, probably by the time that you're hearing this or watching this video, um, I will probably already be, uh, working basically full time as a temp employee for this, uh, for this uh, company here. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's exciting. Um, but yeah, you know, again, I think it's just very important to remember that, you know, this is very important steps into my career, important steps into my field what I love for YouTube and video game design and, and shit to work out. Absolutely. You know? Um, but I think there's a long time to go before that point. So right now it's just like, I got to get a job, focus on that. And luckily I did, you know? Um, so hopefully everything goes smooth with that and, you know, we can go from there. So, um, but yeah, so I guess before I move on to the other stuff, I kind of just want to go on, um, a, a spiel with the job market and shit these days. Cause Oh my god. Like, again, you know, I feel like the only companies that have really called me back are either extremely small companies or um, agencies, right? Because um, I feel like a lot of the process, again, it really falls onto agents trying to find suitable candidates because, you know, it's their job. Um, they're trying to get a pay. Um, they're trying to get a cut of the money for finding a employee that um, that they like, you know? Um, you know, and just kind of going around with that, you know, again, just, just all the jobs that I've applied to, they, they ask for so much. I feel like for some of these, because it's like this same job that immediately took me on, right? No interview, no anything. Um, I have seen the exact same jobs, exact same job descriptions. And they're wanting like three to five years. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why? Like, I feel like honestly, it, as long as you have one specific certification that I'm still trying to go for right now and you have customer service skills, I think you'd be fine in this job, you know, but I, I think part of the issue is like, you know, I think they don't want to pay as much. They don't want to train people. They don't, well, yeah, I mean, it's more so I feel like they don't want to train people, not necessarily because they don't want to, but because they don't know, I guess, you know, they don't have the time or they don't have the resources to. If it was up to me, dude, I would personally train every single one of my employees on my own because I want to make sure that, you know, you know, just make sure that this person is doing what they need to do. I think it's one thing if you get a candidate who is not very knowledgeable in this field, 
but is willing to work hard and willing to be trained. You know, I, I think that's very admirable as opposed to somebody who knows their shit, but, you know, wants to be a fucking dick and not work and not do what they're supposed to do, you know? Um, and I feel like you'd be able to really kind of pick up on that in training a little bit and kind of figure out who they are as a person, you know? Um, so with, you know, with this job, it does seem like they're willing to train and, you know, again, it's, it does seem to be very independent work for the most part. Um, you know, except in the times when maybe you don't know something, you got to reach out to a coworker, uh, maybe reach out to the manager, just to kind of see what next steps are for this. Um, so, but yeah, you know, um, it, I don't know. It's just crazy, man. Like, I'm glad that it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Cause honestly, I thought I'd stuck, I'd be stuck until like December trying to find a fucking job. Right. Um, but I'm very blessed this came along. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I've been through about 10, inter 10 interviews and, you know, uh, there was one job where it was a remote job, man. And I was runner up for that shit. And I, so like, ah, dude, it, cause it was, it was for a company called one medical and they are basically in a, a, a affiliated with Amazon. Um, if you look them up, um, they are basically Amazon's, uh, little pop-up shops for medical, uh, attention, right? Um, I, like, I wouldn't say it's a hospital necessarily, but it's like for primary care. So, you know, like maybe like a doctor's office essentially, but Amazon's version of it. And dude, I would have been working Friday to Monday. It would have been 10 hour shifts, but mind you, it's 18 an hour working from home. That, oh, dude, I was so fucking pissed when I heard about that. Cause you know, cause the, the, um, the agent I was working with on this dude, they were super chill. Uh, but you know, um, they let me know, you know, I, I was runner up, uh, for this position. And, um, you know, it's, it's very possible that the first candidate that they selected to, to have a, 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 an offer extended to, um, they, it's very possible they could deny it for whatever reason. So if they did, uh, that job would basically fall in my lap. So, you know, I was kind of sitting here still applying, but really, really hoping that I could get that remote job. But, um, you know, this opportunity came along first and it's what I've committed to. And, you know, um, would I have liked that remote job? Absolutely. But again, um, with me having no experience, I can't really afford to be picky with it. You know, experience is experience. And I think honestly, starting out, I think it probably is better that I do go in person to get trained by an actual human being and, you know, really kind of understand the job a little more, you know, that way. So, yeah, you know, but I will say one person that is doing it right, though, is John, aka Digital Kingdom. He's doing his shit right because... Um, he was very lucky to get to know his college professor, and now I think he's working part-time at his professor's computer repair shop. You know, not even as an intern, like, I think as, like, a full-blown part-time employee, which I think is amazing, you know? That's, that's the way you should be doing it, you know? Um, I was not so lucky, and, you know, I wasn't able to get an internship, I wasn't able to land anything with that, but... You know, I, I think John's doing it right, you know, um, because ultimately, you know, I think if him and I were to go interview for a computer repair position, right, I have a lot of schooling and I have a certification, but at the same time, John has that experience. Also, and on top of that, computer technician certifications as well. So, you know, out of somebody who has a bachelor's degree as opposed to someone with actual experience, they're obviously going to choose the guy with experience, you know, because he's been in the trenches. He knows what to do. He's worked on so many things, you know, whether it be PCs, um, desktops, both Windows and Apple products, as well as, you know, Android phones, iPhones, iPads, that kind of thing. So there's a very wide variety of things that he's told me that he's worked on. And it's like, they, dude, that's incredible because honestly, at this point, you know, you just keep working with him, you're going to get that experience and, you know, you could turn that around and, you know, try to go somewhere else. Maybe that could pay more or, you know, because I understand that his professor's shop is kind of like a very small one. So it's like a very small startup company, you know. Um, so, you know, I was just thinking as well, you know, it's like it's great that you have that experience. You're getting it somewhere and, you know, you can turn that around and try to do something with that, you know. Um, kind of wish I kind of wish that's what I had done you know um and I think John is still going through college I think he at least I think at the very least he's trying to go for his associates with this um 
I, I'm actually not 100% sure of that plan. I do need to ask him because, again, I think if you're already in here, have experience, he's already got a few certifications under his belt. Like, honestly, personally, I think he'd be better off, you know, maybe... Uh, it, it sounds bad to say, but honestly, they will value experience over college. So, like, if it's something that he wants to finish college, absolutely, by all means, more power to him. You know, I think it'd be good to have at least an associate's, but... You know, I don't think there's any harm done necessarily because he has experience, you know. Um, and, you know, I mean, again, that's what I've talked to him about and just kind of let him know, like, you know, that is ultimately what it really comes down to these days, you know, is experience. So, um, but yeah, no, he's doing it right, man. Um, and also just kind of like a shower thought that I had, you know, and I, and I also talked to John about it, too. But, you know, I was like, you know, if that shop ever needs somebody to do remote work, I got you, bro. I think overall, it'd just be cool to to do that kind of work, you know, and, and I know that, you know, I, I think they only have one person kind of doing a similar job that I would be doing. Um, so, you know, I was thinking maybe like I could maybe have some kind of part time remote job, you know, working for this, uh, the professor's company here that he's working with, you know. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, worst comes to worst, it could just be a thing where, you know, they call me up, I'm able to fix the problem. Um, otherwise, you know, if it's something that I feel like is, hey, you know, that seems to be something of a hardware issue or something maybe that I can't really look at without actually looking at the computer itself. Um, so I'd, I'd probably recommend just to, you know, try to, uh, try to, you know, have the computer be taken to the shop or I don't know if they do house calls, you know, I don't know if, you know, they, if somebody calls and he's like, Hey, you know, I don't want to leave my home, but you know, can you send someone over here to kind of take a look at it? Um, I don't know if they do that, but, uh, but yeah, you know, my, I think, I think it'd be a super cool thing to do remotely as a part-time job. Um, so I don't know. Um, apparently the professor is open to that idea. Um, but I have to get at least two to three months in, in PC support. So, um, I'm going to hope that, you know, this job, this little temp job here is going to kind of help supplement that. But, um, kind of just need to see, I guess, you know, in terms of what exactly it is that they have me do. So, um, but yeah, you know, I just thought it was kind of a, a cool little thing and yeah. John market sucks. John's doing it right. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so with that little weird tangent out of the way, uh, I want to move on to the next extremely big good news. Um, so my wife is confirmed to be pregnant. Um, and as of right now, she is four months pregnant. Um, so her due date is sometime in April. Um, we also found the gender of our child as well, which is a daughter. And that's extremely exciting. You know, um, we are still working on finding her a good name and trying to, you know, work with that. But, um, as of right now, we do have about like five to six months, you know, still to try to figure that out. And, you know, um, only time, I, I guess time will tell in terms of what the name will actually be. Uh, we, we have, we have a, a list of names and we've kind of been going through one by one, either yay nay kind of thing and just kind of trying to narrow it down so um we're still working on that right now but um you know that's that's very exciting news and i'm i'm very happy and um again you know i think a lot of the stress was you know we wouldn't be able to have our own place to to raise our children in and you know really have their own environment to do that in but um, you know, now with my job and, you know, with my wife still working her job, um, you know, I think that's very possible, you know, um, and I think a, a big burden has kind of been lifted off of me, you know, um, you know, I think just having the job has really lightened the load on my shoulders and kind of really allowed me to breathe a bit more, you know, especially with uh, you know, a child on the way. And that's also another reason why I kind of wanted to join the military as well, because we found out she was pregnant, uh, back in August. And, you know, that I was thinking to myself, you know, I really need to get in because there's a lot of good benefits. Um, and they're going to take care of my family as well as my, my children. Right. Um, but you know, unfortunately that didn't pan out and that's kind of why I was down in the dumps for a good bit, just struggling, trying to find a job, trying to find something because, you know, I, I didn't know how I was going to take care of kids, you know, if I didn't even have a fucking job, you know, like, I don't, I don't want to be a bummy dad and shit, you know, so, um, you know, I was, I was trying everything and I just want to, I want to thank the homie 
the homie upstairs, Big G, you know, um, for, you know, being able to help me find this job, you know, because I, I truly, I think this was a miracle. Like, I don't, I, like, I don't know how else to explain. Like, truly speaking, it is a miracle that I was able to find this, you know, with everything feeling like it was crashing down. But now it's like, I feel like I can rebuild myself a little bit and, you know, go into this job, put in my, put in all of my effort into it, make the money. And I think we'll be okay. You know? Um, and again, you know, I just, I hope that I can get, you know, a full-time offer with them. I think that'd be the, the ideal outcome, obviously, but, um, you know, uh, but you know, again, I think the job, just getting the job, I think was the biggest hurdle. Now it is, you know, being a father of two, I think that's going to be the next big hurdle. Um, everything else in between is going to be um, fairly straightforward, I would say. Uh, but, you know, I'm someone who likes to take a try to try to take it one at a time, you know. Uh, but yeah, so again, you know, I'm I'm very happy and I, I've been wanting to let you all know for a while now, because, uh, again, I, I believe in transparency and honesty, but um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I had a job first and I was making money before, you know, letting y'all know about that. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, ultimately that's really the, the two big things of good news. And with those two things now, um, obviously there's going to be plans going forward in terms of, you know, what's to be expected on both this channel and the digital kingdom channel. Um, I got a lot going on to, I will be honest, but um, I'm going to make, I'm going to try to make time for, for everything. Uh, I think it's possible. It's very doable and I want to make it work. So, um, so with that, um, we, so the plans going forward, right? So again, because of this job, you know, I plan on saving up money for about a couple months to prove to, uh, these apartment landlords that we're, that we're thinking about moving in with, um, that, you know, we have a stable income and we're able to pay the rent plus all the extra bills that come with that shit um so really it's just you know trying to get an apartment and me and the wife have are looking into getting a storage unit because she has a lot of things in her room that she wants to kind of start moving out because um there's just a lot of things in here and i think you know again you know we we share a room so there's a lot of things you know mixed in and shit so um you know, we kind of want to start taking all the big things that we can and start moving it in there. And then, of course, you know, we have Facebook Marketplace. People sell them really nice things for cheap, you know. So we want to be able to buy those things and have a place to store them for the time being. Um, so, um, yeah, so, you know, we, we're, we're going to get a storage unit here soon and we're going to try to. And it's, it's like super cheap, too. Like, I think you can fit like an entire bedroom in there for like 30 bucks a month, which is really good, honestly, for, for storage units. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we're just going to try to save up, um, for the apartment just in general, try to get some bank statements so that way we can show them like, Hey, you know, we are working, we do have enough money to pay the rent. You know, you don't have to worry about that. Right. So, so John and I spoke about it already. And, um, you know, with, with trying to move into that apartment and save up and all that, once I do move in, um, my plan is to try to be up at about 3 or 4 a.m. in order to record videos with them once I've, you know, fully moved in. Um, and, you know, that's just to ensure that, you know, I'm able to still go to my job, um, take care of my kids, and just make sure that, you know, there is still a certain amount of time that we have where we can record videos and do what we need to do for that. Um, so we um, kind of just need to see how that's going to play out. And I know they also haven't been mentioned on either channel for a good bit, but um, Peter has been doing more live streams and stuff lately. And I think they typically go live at about 3 a.m. our time. So, you know, I think if, if Peter wants to join, um, I think we can make that happen, you know, because John's already a night owl. Um, I'm going to get up early as hell for this, you know, and Peter, you know, uh, they're out in Australia, so it's it's you know they're on a they're on a much different time zone, so it's probably like if I had to say probably like towards dinner time, probably maybe. Um, so I mean I don't know. We can make something work. Um, I'm I'm, I'm probably just gonna also let Peter know probably the plan for that and just kind of see, you know, what specifically we can do and see if we can, um, try to try to do a video with him again, you know. 
um so i don't know that'd be cool now you know of course obviously i'm not i'm not gonna wake up every single day in order to do that because I, I i can't imagine waking up every single day at 3 or 4 a.m that's that's gotta be terrible you know um but you know john and i will figure out a schedule and we will try to figure out something that works for the both of us so that way um we can still continue to provide content for you all so um yeah and then um so when my daughter is born sometime in april um i still do plan on trying to you know try to record videos with john of course um but again you know caring for my family comes first and i i imagine there's going to be a lot of crying a lot of changed diapers at night so uh, maybe I get lucky, you know, maybe I wake up at three because my, uh, my daughter's crying, you know, maybe I got to give her some food, uh, change her diaper or something. And she just goes right back to bed. And, you know, maybe with that, I can, you know, just go and let John know, Hey, I'm good to record kind of thing. You know, um, we're going to probably have to play it by ear and kind of see what happens with that. Um, but you know, again, caring for my family comes first. I think everybody can understand that. And then it's recording second, you know, I'll always have time to edit, but I may not always have time to record, you know, and I think, I think John understands that as well. So, um, I think that's also why he's kind of been trying to stock up on, um, uh, solo videos as well, you know, just, just to prepare for that eventuality where it's like, it's very possible. I may not be able to, uh, to record, you know, so, uh, but yeah, you know, again, we're going to see what happens with that when the time comes, that's still kind of a ways out for next year. So, um, but yeah, you know, and of course, I'll try to keep y'all updated with more life update videos as that goes, but yeah. Um, yeah, so for this channel specifically, I, I still do plan on making videos here. Uh, but again, you know, when it comes to content creation, uh, the Digital Kingdom channel is going to be the priority. Um, I am sitting on a good amount of pre-recorded videos for this channel, and I think those should last up until the middle of March of 2025. So um, hopefully in the event that I'm able to get an apartment by the end of this year, uh, that should give me about three to four months to go ahead and pre-record uh, more videos and maybe work on easier videos for my channel. Because um, I know right now, I can think of two series that need to be finished. Um, I have Cuphead video stocked up, and I need to finish that. And I also have a Dark Souls series that is six episodes in right now. Uh, but I, I need to I need to keep working on that. And it, it's been at least a good two months since I've touched Dark Souls, so I'm going to have to knock the rust off and really kind of get at it again but um but yeah so i mean you know um i kind of just want to see what happens with that but you know again um i guess the order priorities you know is my family my job uh digital kingdom and then my channel and then probably like video games or, or video game making or whatever so um but yeah so um and then you know regarding the videos on my channel uh for now i think i'm just gonna keep it you know as goofy coding videos because i know i don't know some of y'all may have seen the python gpt thing that i was working with um i do plan on trying to use that for video games maybe uh, i think that'd be cool um you know so uh also i guess other videos would include playthroughs of certain video games and you know maybe sprinkling videos like these you know with life update videos where you know i just i kind of update you all on my life and everything going on um i think again you know, I think it's important to be transparent and honest with everybody because, you know, um, the way that I see it right now, you know, you, you have the real me, you know, I'm not really someone who is too outspoken and really, I feel like, you know, while I don't think it's necessary to give every single aspect of my life, I will, I do want to kind of highlight those things that are important. So that way, you know, everybody's aware and hopefully everybody can understand, you know, if I do have to step away for some time and, you know, I, I just, I want to let y'all know. So that way, you know, hopefully there is, um, good support with that. You know, you know, I don't, I don't want to just up and leave without saying anything, you know, I don't want to pull a, a Corey Kenshin, you know, uh, that dude's been gone for ages, you know, without a word, but, um, yeah, you know, so, I mean, ultimately I, I think, you know, I, I just want to kind of play by ear, see what happens. Um, test the waters out with different kinds of things and just try to see if we can make everything work right uh, i think that's really the uh the plan with that so um and again you know um i may do things where you know i, I might try to do some occasional rage game videos as well because i am somebody who prides himself on you know keeping a level head when it comes to um to sort of more 
infuriating games and I, I do have a good few rage games saved up and I want to I want to see if maybe there's something I can do or like maybe I can try to keep my voice down because um, I don't know I, I can figure out something with that you know but I think it'd just be cool to do something like that um, but and you know again I think it'd be cool to do this YouTube thing full time but again you know we haven't reached that point um, I'm I'm not making enough money to you know comfortably be like yeah I can do this you know um, and you know again just with the family situation um, I, I don't think it's feasible at this time especially when at this point I'm saying on 21 subs I think the digital kingdom channel at this time is sitting at about 238 so you know we're, we're not even monetized right um, but yeah you know kind of just want to see I guess what happens with that but um, you know just one step at a time right um, one step at a time get it all figured out and just kind of see you know where where life ends up taking us right um, and then I guess on that note so with labyrinthophobia that's not going to be worked on for the time being uh, just again due to the nature of everything that's happening um, I do have another idea for a game that is going to be worked on probably in a smaller scale. Um, I think that would be more feasible, especially kind of, again, with everything going on. Uh, Labyrinthophobia is kind of a big project uh, for one person, so I, I want to try to work on something that is more smaller scale. Um, I don't think I'm going to make short devlogs on it anymore. I think, if anything, I'm going to probably maybe like a 10 minute devlog video on it um i don't i think because devlogs do take a lot of time you know i have to script i have to get gameplay footage of it i have to put it all together um you know so i don't know i may not even do them anymore to be honest like i don't know um, i mean if that's if that's something y'all want me to do just let me know down in the comments but otherwise um i may i may just not worry about trying to do devlog videos and may just put the time and effort into actually making the the games which I, I think makes the most sense right um but yeah you know um that's still up in the air but you know it is what it is so um but yeah you know i think with all of that i think that's really going to be it for this uh for this life update 2 video you know uh just to summarize you know uh i get a job it's a temp job hopefully i get a full-time offer but it's it's a job regardless so i'm happy about that uh, my wife is confirmed pregnant uh, we are having a baby girl for that a daughter so that's very exciting um because of those things um we're gonna try to save up for a apartment and try to um you know try to get that apartment and move into that as soon as possible um john and i are gonna work out a schedule for recording so that way we can still make videos for you guys and try to get all that figured out and i guess last but not least um Thank you guys so much for, you know, uh, showing your support. I know, um, I know we're still such a small channel and I know that things are not so cut and dry right now. Um, and I, and I do apologize for that, but you know, again, at the same time, I'm very grateful that I think everybody watching this can understand where I'm coming from with this. And, you know, I think, uh, the support has been really nice. Um, even though, you know, it's, it may not be much support but you know support regardless right um so i i appreciate that very much and um you know i'll, I'll still be the digital kingdom editor um i just may not be able to record as much uh, but I, I always will try to find time to at least edit videos you know um so again you know still got to talk to john about that still need to see how everything plays out but right now um we do have some videos made for November so that's good um, we have some videos made for December I think we still need to fill that out but um, I would say probably by December we should hopefully have a better idea in terms of where I am in terms of you know getting an apartment and trying to figure out life right um, so yeah um, so yeah so with that um, again thank you all so much for the support thank you all for understanding and um, thank you so much just for being here um, I do appreciate each and every single one of you, and we love each and every single one of you, and, you know, we wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys, so, um, yeah, again, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for supporting us and me, and thank you for understanding, and, um, yeah, so with that, again, as always, my name is the Digital Kingdom Editor, and I'll see you in the next one.